Your Natchez History Minute is brought to you by Natchez National Historical Park. As they did on the vast plantations that generated their great wealth, Natchez planters relied on the labor of the enslaved to run their suburban villas smoothly and effectively. In 1848, when the McMurrin family moved into Melrose, they owned 17 slaves. By 1861, on the eve of the Civil War, that number had increased to 25. The house servants lived in the rooms above the kitchen and dairy, while those that worked on the estate resided in two slave cabins located east of the main house. While no information is known about the individuals that resided and worked at Milrose, McMurrin family letters do mention the name of various slaves, referencing their health, their roles in the household, and various social functions held for them. Enslaved African Americans mentioned in family correspondence and diaries include Rachel, Marcellus, Maurice, Charlotte, Patrick, Miami, Wesley, Charles, Williams, Bob, Mary Ellen, Adeline, Bill Taylor, Eliza, and Emily. Although these men and women lived and worked at Millworlds, suffered and rejoiced over many years on the estate, we have no pictures of them and none of their words survive in correspondence or diaries. Due to the history of slavery, prejudice, and discrimination against African Americans in the United States, African Americans were routinely excluded from many records that would have documented the details of their daily lives. I'm Valerie Jackson Jones, a descendant of Emily, an enslaved woman, and John T. McMurrin of Melrose. And this has been your Natchez History Minute.